Take a look at the size of these beautiful 1993 bluefin tuna. It was a year that not many skippers had ever seen before. Irv Grisbeck told me, Phil, it's some of the most phenomenal fishing I've ever seen in my life. And Irv was out on a trip where they had a fish that went over 170 pounds. He was on the big game. And Grisbeck just said, Phil, this is something that you all have got to take advantage of when it's on the bite. Something also that was very unique about the bluefin bite of 1993, these fish all fired up right at the full moon. So the full moon is what you had to wait for to get a bite. Nice job on another big bluefin tuna. All right, that noise that you're hearing, if you're hearing that, no, they didn't serve beans for lunch on the trialing big game. That is the foam inside this gentleman's rod belt that you hear making that sound as he's really struggling with a nice big bluefin tuna. So, boy, I tell you, those uh, harnesses and also the belts come in very, very handy. If you're in a prolonged, protracted battle, say you run through a battle for a couple of hours with one of these blue bluefin, it can really rip you apart if you don't have something to set it in there on. So make sure that you do have proper harnesses. And and proper rod belts and you will be all the happier for it. Another big blue antenna at color doing a circle. Let's just watch this beautiful fish as it circles around and they get ready to put a gaff in yet another mammoth blue fin tuna. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. That's a that's a cow bass, if I ever saw one. Nice. Okay, right there, right there. Oh, no. there man. One crank at a time. One quick one. One quick one. Yeah, you can hear the deckhand saying, yeah, one quick wind. When you've got them like this, make sure you're just short pumping them. The idea is not to raise your rod too high and get a whole bunch of line at once. Just nice short strokes so you keep that fish's head, you keep turning them, you keep them circling and just a little bit closer and a little bit further up and they can get a gaff or two in this big bluefin tuna. Now remember, when they swim under the boat like that, lean out so the line doesn't fray up there against the boat. And boy, I'll tell you, this is the bite of a lifetime on the tri-lean big game. It is something that these anglers, and you know they get the feeling right now that they're into something really special. It's something they're never going to forget. Take a look at this big bluefin tuna coming up there, breaking the surface for a second. And this angler, can you see his face? Can you see how he's struggling with this thing? He is really beat up. If he doesn't get this thing in a hurry, he's going to lose. The fish is going to win. But he's got it nice and close and on board the trotting big game. Another big Bluefin tuna, what a tremendous job this young angler did. And what a gorgeous fish hits the deck of the big game once again. Just a gorgeous big bluefin tuna. <laughs> Gosh darn, these are beautiful fish, aren't they? These big bluefin all eating the heavy string, the 40, the 60-pound mono. And you know, uh, something interesting about these fish eating the heavy line, we mentioned to you that they will do that on a fairly regular basis, but this was unusual to see all these big fish eating the heavy line. I talked to my good friend and mentor, Ron Dotson, up there at National Marine Fisheries. He is a marine biologist, and Ron said that they caught fish from the 1993 season and they did some samples on them and they found that they had very low fat content. Most of these bluefin had extremely low fat content and Dotson said the bottom line was they were just hungry and anything that looked like an edible bait to them because there was a lack of bait that year, they just voraciously chewed up and that's part of the reason why we saw such tremendous action in the 1993 season. And that's kind of interesting, isn't it? This low fat content meant that these fish were kind of starving to death almost and when they saw anything that resembled a lively bait they jumped on it 60 pound 80 pound 100 pound they didn't care they were just downright hungry and that's why we saw some of the crazy action that we saw in 1993 we made mention to it brief mention a moment ago about the full moon you know a lot of guys will say oh full moon i'm not going fishing that's a lame time to be out there 
But for these big bluefin, and incidentally, I don't believe that to be true, but on these big bluefin, that's when you saw the surge in activity. They did it four full moons in a row in 93. They came up and went on the bite on the full moon, and it was tremendous action. And it got to the point, at least on the 976 in a hotline, that when we got close to the full moon, we'd say, hey, book your trip and get out there. And it was like clockwork. These fish would turn on on the full every single time. So we'll keep you in tune with that in coming years, and keep that in mind if you're thinking about these big bluefin. But again, I'll remind you that every year is different. Take a look at the size of this big bluefin tuna. Another happy angler on a tri laden big game. This trip has just been made right there with that fish as it is really a gorgeous fish. And everybody, Harlan giving you a look at it, everybody is really thrilled to death. Folks, another thing I want to get into you here for just a moment, and that is the tri lane Big Game. What a gorgeous sport fishing vessel she is. As you take a look at deep color on a fish that looks like it could be up there in the 100-pound class. It's a magnificent, beautiful fish. Look at that thing. But the tri lane Big Game can take care of all of your sport fishing pleasures. Please give it a try. It is a marvelously run operation by Irv Grisbeck, who pays attention to every small detail right on up to the great details. The food, the crew, you talk about spacious. When I don't have any trouble sliding up and down the rails, that's spacious. And that's what this boat is. It is an absolute joy to fish on. It's something I think you are going to enjoy so very much. And then add to it some damn good fishing like this. And boy, you are in heaven. Look at the size of that big bluefin tuna. That fish looks like it's got as low a fat content as me. Look at the stomach on that thing. Beautiful big fish. And boy, these things are just coming on one after another in some really tremendous action. Yo did a great job on this trip, and you see him there, Yo, with another nice big bluefin tuna. Some of these guys have got three, four fish in their sack now, and I'll tell you, that's an awful lot of meat to take home. Well, and in the midst of that blue fin tuna, this young man throws on a nice big yellowtail. Take a look at the size of that yellow. And while in comparison to the blue fin, this young man did a great job. And ow, hey, I got to get some circulation back in my hand. That hurt. Wow. What a nice big yellow and what a fine job that young man did. All right, you talk about torture. Look at that. They take a swing at that big blue fin tuna. They're going to try to put a gap in it. And they just about have him coming up on board this angle. You know he's smiling right now. Hey, I got him, Charlie. Uh-oh. And the thing gets back down in the water. And now it's really hot. It's really creating a lot of commotion as it races back toward the stern. And this big blue fin is really fired up now. Are they going to get it? Well, I'm going to let you watch for a moment. Take a look at the way this thing comes out. Nice big blue fin tuna hit the deck of the tri lane big game. That was torturous, but they did get the fish. And look at that gorgeous, beautiful blue fin tuna. Look down in the water. When we talk about deep color, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about one of these mammoth fish gliding through the water so graciously that you get to really admire just how wonderful an animal this big blue fin tuna really is. Take a look at how regal this fish is as it comes to gaff on board the tri lane big game. And I'll tell you right now, when you've got them like this, you've got to keep their head. If you don't, you're going to get pinned to the rail and they're going to take some string on you just like that. They are going to really do you in. So keep turning the handle and that's the way you're going to get them. This man is doing an absolutely fabulous job. He's got the right tackle. He's got this fish turned around, but it just gets his head on him. And again, folks, if you're short stroking, sometimes you can keep them from doing that. Don't raise that rod tip too high. When you do, you've got to come down all that way and sometimes they can get their head. Here they is, another big blue fan tuna. And look at this fish, really struggle to get off the gas. They get another gaff in them, and they're going to hoist them up on board. And I'll tell you what, here is a proud angler, and for good reason. Take a look 
at the size of this bluefin tuna. And folks, again, it's worth reminding you all that proper tackle is going to make all the difference in the world. Look at that big gold reel with a heavy monofilament. And look how that fish gets turned around in an awful hurry. That's what's going to make or break your trip. Proper tackle and knowing how to use it. Man, I'll tell you, that's going to do it for you. Folks, Bob Alvarez just getting work. <laughs> Look at that, Phil. My goodness. You better believe it here, Phil. He looks like a long haired washer cutting factory right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, Bob Alvarez and I, when we step on the sport boats, feel like Rodney Dangerfield. We get no respect. Robert Cooperstein filming away there and giving Bob a hard time and kind of following him around and just harassing him as he's really doing the best he can with a big bluefin tuna. Alvarez finally got to drop the camera for a moment, and he got to take on one of these big bluefin tuna. And he said, Phil, I'll tell you, man, you cannot believe how taxing catching one of these fish is. It really takes everything out of you. When you get to that last few feet, you can barely pull on them. They're so doggone tough. Well, Bob did a nice job. He finally got to get one on board. Harlan is shaking him off the gas so Alvarez can give you a better look at what is just another beautiful bluefin tuna. And tough fish, really tough. I mean, if you look at the tuna, well, I think the bluefin is one of the toughest of all of them, of the yellowfin, of the albacore, of all of them. The big guy, the bluefin tuna just seems to be one of those tough, mean tuna, and they really do take you around the boat a few times. And boy, I tell you, this one did just that. Took this angle around the boat a couple of times before he was fortunate enough to put it on board. And man, now it is time for the celebration. Great job, and another nice bloop. And still another fish coming on board. And the bite is picked up at this point a little bit more than just a fish or two going at a time. Now there's several anglers going, and several guys are getting bit. And it's the moment you choose that good hot bait and flip it out there. Boy, it's just about then when you have a bite on your hands. Folks, please remember a couple of things, a couple of other alternatives as you see this gentleman hoist up this big, beautiful bluefin. Remember that the iron can also be effective on the bluefin tuna. And I'm talking mostly about the yo-yo iron, dropping a jig down to 100 or 200 feet, something like a chrome UFO number five, a heavy jig that's going to sink down is a great way to take these bluefin on. Nice fish coming on board. And you know one of the greatest things about fishing the yo-yo iron? First of all, it gets you down to a depth where there's more meat to the school. Remember we talked about only 10% of the actual body of fish splash around on the surface. The meat is down deeper. So the yo-yo iron will get you down there to the meat. But secondly, fish bite the iron and they don't pay any attention to the mono you're using. They don't really care. So you can put a 60-pound mono on a yo-yo iron, drop it down, and wind on it. And I'll tell you, it's a great way to take these bluefin tuna. Let me just give you a little instruction on how to use the yo-yo iron. You go over to the off-wind corner of the boat, the opposite side of the bait, guys, so you're out of their hair. Cast it out just about as far as you can. And then when the iron comes straight up and down and sinks straight up and down, wind on it and wind on it fast. When you get a bite, just keep turning the handle. That's how you set the hook. Just keep turning the handle. The yo-yo iron, make it work for you. It's a great way to get it done. Look at this gentleman. He was locked up in a battle for a long, long time. And here comes another bluefin tuna on board. Harlan lifting him, sliding him down on the deck there. And this man, well, he is as thrilled as can be. Hey, let's give him a pat on the back. He deserves it. What a great job both of these guys did on another nice bluefin tuna.